Look at that. My wall, it's four feet tall. And this guy's like, the fuck? It's like, yeah, like, my wall at home's four feet tall. Not like this one here that's like six foot. Like I've got a small one. And basically what you've done is you've interrupted their game. So their process is, you've stolen this chocolate bar. I need it back. Why did you do it? And you've basically stopped them right at the beginning. So they're, they're, they have a brain fart moment. And in that sort of blank space moment, that's where you can utilize um, the confusion to input something or just use the opportunity to, to run away. Basically, you're derailing their, their set path. So like I said, they've got their path to get from A to B, and you just stopped it. Yep. Okay. Yes. Then yeah. Yes, yeah, so he he was saying. Oh, have you got a microphone or? Okay, I said if you use um, interruption and confusion, um, then you need to put up a high pressure on it, and if you yeah, leave so the victim some time to think about it, then you're lost. Yeah. So basically, what you're doing here, you're, you're absolutely right. When you cause interruption, this 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 gap is somewhere between one to three seconds. And this is your opportunity to inject your code, essentially. So you've created a gap of white noise to then put in what you want to happen. So you're, like you're saying, you're taking focus, and if someone thinks about something for long enough, then yeah, their brain starts kicking in and back to their game. So NLP, it's all good, but so disappointing. So when I'm, I first started looking into NLP, I thought, oh, this stuff can't work. And then you start to experience it, and just a prime example I first had with it is I play squash twice a week, and I really hate losing, and I get real pissed off. So I um, had this, um, I think it was a, this guy called Tad James, he's an NLP practitioner, and he had this, this language pattern for stuff like this, and I just sat down and repeated it myself, you know, five times, and next time I played squash, I really enjoyed it, I wasn't angry, and it kind of, I'm not sure... You know, exactly whether it's me convincing myself or, you know, how the reprogramming happens. But that's when I kind of thought, this stuff could really work. But then you speak to these other NLP practitioners. And basically, if you don't believe in the gospel of Bandha, you know, they're not interested. So they are very much set on, this is how it works. And if you try and speak to them about, oh, I do social engineering and I like to I experience this, not interested. And so it really disappointed me that these people didn't want to learn, they didn't want to expand. You know, this is all about changing and reframing. And I was like, great, so we can reframe the information that we've experienced. And they're like, no. So I was kind of really disappointed. But one of the last sort of um, meetings I went to with NLP practitioners, I met this one guy, and um, I was talking to him about social engineering, and and he was really interested. And he had just recently started... Uh, learning hypnosis and I was like yeah hypnosis it's all rubbish just people barking like dogs and clucking like chickens and great but he said something that really sort of interests me is no hypnosis is a really powerful tool you know it's language it's just like NLP the processes and everything and I'm like yeah but NLP I, I thought it was really good and I've taken what it, from it what I think is benefit but I'm, I'm really disheartened with these guys and he's like yeah but Imagine with social engineering, if you could just ask someone, so don't worry about trying to manipulate them particularly or get information out of them once you broke into them. I want you to just ask them to give you the password. Just... And I'm like, okay, so I need to put a gun to their head and then they're going to tell me, but... He said it's something interesting, I think he's right. We always answer at some level. So even if... You know, if you ask someone... You know, do you like me? And they might say yes, but their body language is telling you something else. So we always have to answer at some level. And this is what really got me interested in um, looking at hypnosis. So, like I said, I'd heard about hypnosis before, and it's like intriguing. I'm like, yeah, but everyone's playing along, stage shows and stuff. So I thought, right, I need to become a hypnotist. Let's find out if this stuff is really for real. So I started, um, like, like all of you guys, you surf the internet, you find these forums of all these people that think they can hypnotize people and they reckon they're shagging girls at college and stuff because they hypnotize them. So I thought, okay, so what is hypnosis? 
And hypnosis has been around before like the 1840s, but this is really when it started to become more aware of, of what the process of hypnosis was. And basically the, the word came from what they called neurohypnotism, and it came up, this is actually someone in Scotland, I was going to say the UK, but Scottish people don't like that, so in Scotland. So this guy called James, he was a surgeon, and he sort of came up with this, I guess, you know, the language of hypnosis, or, and how his experience of it, and that's when it got officially sort of termed as hypnosis is the term. And neurohypnotism, I think it's called nervous sleep, that's what, it's, that's what the, the meaning of it is. So basically what, what hypnosis is, everyone thinks that when I ask people, have you been hypnotized, oh I don't want to be hypnotized because I lose control and I'm asleep and everything's gone blank. And this is because, you know, we have this whole thing of a wave, the clock now, if you just look here and everything's going to go blank, and then you'll wake up an hour later and you've been doing all sorts of strange things. But really, it's really focusing on your subconscious, and it really is a, it's a real focused state of attention, not something that oh, I don't know what's happening. It's really a simple... That's what the kit is for, keep it simple, stupid. It's a focused state of attention that, like I said before, we need the commitment. So people are so focused on what we're saying that all this stuff is just going in to the subconscious and we're reprioritizing the information that's coming through to the conscious mind so that we can manipulate people. And really, the brain is... Um, this is why you, like, you can't use hypnosis for statements, you know, when you um, work with the police. You know, people can't use hypnosis to rec recall something because our brain is really good at filling in the gaps. So if you were to say to someone under hypnosis, you at this crime scene, you remember the white car? The brain will say, oh, he, ne he really needs a white car. We'll make that happen. So this is why it isn't true because we're being really vague and making assumptions and they're just making our brain connect the links. So you hear a lot of hypnotists say, I'm not sure which one it may be your left or your right leg may be becoming you know, stuck to the floor. It's, this, it's a vagueness, but at the same time there's the intent this is going to happen. So, and our mind just fills in the blanks. So when I was um, reading about hypnosis, it's, um, lots of it is obviously all therapy. You're going to see a hypnotherapist, which is also another great thing. So I spoke to some hypnotherapists, and I'm like, right, show me hypnosis, Hypno hypnotize me now. Oh no, it doesn't work like that. You need to lay down and I'll speak to you for an hour and you'll be all calm and I'm like that isn't going to help me I haven't got time to get someone to lay down so then I found out really about this form of rapid induction so literally you know we're talking seconds to a minute of boshing someone under and this is where one of the, th the key things for rapid induction is like I said getting feedback asking people so everyone is slightly different because they're playing their own game so inspecting what's happening. So when I'm talking to you, you know, what are you feeling now? What's happening? And people come up with this, the strangest things like, I feel like a tree. Okay, if that, if that works for you, that's, that's the word we need to use. And the main thing with hypnosis is keep it simple and with language in general. So don't, you don't need a, a long story about why I should be here because that doesn't happen in real life. Just keep it simple, keep it plain, easy to understand and just really focus on our objective. So a few of the people... So I was researching, probably this is just almost two years ago, this guy called Dave Alman, and the reason he was so sort of influential back then was because um, he was one of the first guys that apparently this guy had a heart transplant just under hypnosis because he, he was um, allergic to anaesthetics, this, this patient. So this guy Dave Alman hypnotized this guy and he had a heart transplant with um, no anaesthetics. Now, obviously the mind can overcome a lot of pain, but really the skin feels lots of pain internally. Apparently, you know, I'm, not an, I'm not an expert, but <laughs> internally, like, internal body parts don't feel the same sort of pain. So it's not really, you might be thinking, rubbish, there's no way this guy could have had his heart replaced under hypnosis. But this is, so he basically worked for most of his hypnotic career, because he was a radio broadcaster as well, but most of his hypnotic career with surgeons. So writing, he wrote this book just for surgeons on hypnotherapy, and that's, I think he only really had one book published. And that's the book I was reading about how he was doing hypnosis, but it was very much focused on, you know, people in the medical industry. And then, if any of you know about hypnosis, you would have heard of Milton Erickson, if you know about NLP, Milton Erickson, because Richard Bandler and that, they 
studied Milton Erickson's work and he was really famous for the stories he would tell so people would say you go and see about him for therapy and he didn't really hypnotize you you went in the room and he'd tell you a story that just doesn't seem to make sense and you'd come out and you would have been hypnotized so he was really the guy that he made the most changes in hypnosis so I was reading all his stuff and I was like wow this is great so I need to go and try it so I'm out speaking to people I'm a hypnotist I've never done it before and so I'm going to hypnotize you now and you do all these things and just concentrate on my hand and sleep and they're like no and I'm like shit this isn't good <laughs> and then so I kind of obviously got disheartened with this process <laughs> and I was thinking okay like I said all along hypnosis is rubbish it doesn't work I can't do it <laughs> then what happened about a year and a half ago this guy called Anthony Jackman he's in the UK and his, his dad's a hypnotist he released this book called Reality is Plastic and it was all focused on rapid induction great exactly what I'm looking for and it was really his work that I read that things really started just to come together so then I was going out trying things with people and it was working and I was like wow hypnosis really does work what can I do with it but then I had the problem of you go up to somebody and I'm thinking how can I use this for social media? I can't just walk up to somebody and say okay I just want you to close your eyes for a minute <laughs> okay you're, you're going to do something to me um, and so I met up with this guy Anthony Jackwin at um, a magic convention in the UK Blackpool magic convention huge place and he introduced me to this other guy well actually no sorry so first of all I heard about this guy called David Kaloff and he was an American guy as well and he did this um, open eyes hypnosis and I thought that's interesting but he hasn't really got any books those courses and I can't fly to the states for these courses and that's it I was talking to Anthony Jackman about David Kaloff and in Blackpool I met this guy called James Tripp again another guy in the UK and he does this stuff called hypnosis without trance and I was speaking to him about okay I've, you try and hypnotize these people and it doesn't work and then so how successful can I be with this and he was speaking about how you know as soon as you mention hypnosis and people put up a barrier because like you're going to cluck like a chicken or bark like a dog or something so, so mentally we, we're mentally preparing ourselves for this so if we're trying to social engineer people and try and use some hypnotic language if, we, if you use the word hypnosis people have this horror horror picture in their mind and what he showed me was how um, just about using language you know the next thing you know someone has their hand stuck to a table are you hypnotized? no? because they're awake it's, you know the eyes open so I went on a few of his courses and this is where it's, things really started to come clear to me is in my mind I don't really think there is any such thing as hypnosis there it isn't and it isn't so basically you might say I've never ever been hypnotized but if you've ever been driving to work and then all of a sudden you're at work and you're kind of like I'm a, oh, I must have been on autopilot that, that is what hypnosis is we're constantly I don't like the word trance but different things are happening to us all the time you know a mind for the mindless state and that's when I really realized that all this stuff is just language it's just focused attention and language so we don't got to be saying oh I'm going to hypnotize you to let me in you can just use the language to, to get people and to persuade them to misdirect them and give them the perception that something should be happening and, and you're an authoritative figure and the other thing about the brain it's a weird thing it doesn't do negatives too well so if I was to ask you all the question I don't want you to think of a pink elephant and what's happening in your mind whether you really realize it is you're thinking right okay pink elephant but don't think about the pink elephant so just the, just the, the word think uh, you know don't think because the think of pink elephant is in the word um, that's you just have to think it. So if you're saying to someone, oh, you know, you don't have to let me in, there's some intention there of let me in. So subconsciously these things are all happening. So really, we can speak in negatives but still get a positive outcome. Okay. So how does all this stuff work? And how do we hypnotize people? How do we get, how do we manipulate people? How do we get people to do what we want to do? Now, we've all got this thing that's a guardian of our mind it's called the critical factor and this is I guess the firewall between the subconscious and the